So you want to get a 4.0, you want to get straight A's, but you're super lazy, you procrastinate, and you do not want to spend so much time studying. If that is you, like it is me, then this video is just for you. Let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel ESP Daniela of where I talk about anything and everything related to education, tech, scholarships, career tips, professional development. As you already know from the thumbnail and the title, I will be talking about my top 10 study hacks that have gotten me a 4.0 GPA for both undergraduate school and high school. Now I am currently in graduate school. I don't have a 4.0 for graduate school because I have been slacking a lot because I have so many other obligations now because I'm also working full time. But this advice mainly pertains to undergrad and high school students. So one of the things that I like to do when I'm studying is using acronyms to quickly retain information. So you know how, for example, in math class, we learn PEMDAS, which stands for parentheses, exponents, etc. I use that same method when it comes to quickly retaining information because just think about it after all these years you still remember what all these other acronyms stand for so why not continue to implement that within your studying strategy the next thing i like to do to retain information in a shorter amount of time is using humor when i am studying whether that looks like turning certain phrases into a catchy phrase or memifying it so as an example of this i had a history class during my freshman year of college and i was studying last minute for it like i always do and so i was trying to remember and retain which u.s president did this certain thing and so the answer to that question was going to be the president harry s truman however i made sure to put some humor in it and instead wrote in my notes that it was harry at Truman. Sorry for the profanity there. But yeah, that was what helped me with remembering that certain thing that I needed to know just one hour before the exam and all these other things I would use like provocative humor or just like standard humor to remember it in a shorter amount of time. So the next retention hack I like to use is using alliteration. So alliteration will look something like this phrase using my own name. My real name's Carlin, by the way, not ESP, Daniela. Can Carlin create Christmas cards? And as you can see, all those words within that phrase all start with the C. So if you can creatively find somewhere in your notes or your exam study guide to use alliteration, that is also super helpful. And another method I like to use when studying is rhyming. So you know how like with songs, right? Even years after the fact of hearing that song, we still remember the lyrics. So if you can find a certain concept that you have to remember for a test or a quiz and make it rhyme, you're more than likely going to be more likely to remember it. Another study retention method that I like to use is the Pomodoro study method which you probably heard of and I actually like to twist it up by calling it the anime Doro study method. I believe there's like another youtuber who talks about it as being the anime Doro study method and I didn't even know he was talking about this because I've been doing this for years but we just so happen to say the same thing. So essentially with this method you are breaking up into increments of studying and then breaks and then repeating that process and the reason why this is so effective is because if you spend too much time focusing on one particular thing you're more than likely not going about it the most effective way possible. Like for example, really long lectures in college, like those three hour lectures, most people do not retain everything that was stated within those three hours. They might just retain one hour or 45 minutes of it. So with that in mind, if you can break up into increments like studying for 45 minutes, taking a break five minutes, studying again for maybe an hour, taking a break for 10 minutes and so forth, you're going to be more likely to retain that information over time. So now that I have covered my retention hacks, I also want to talk about how I end up forming my notes. Now, I personally like to do nothing but digital notes. I never really cared for physical notes, mainly because I get distracted when I do physical notes. I start doodling on the corners like little anime characters and I can't focus. And of course the benefit, the huge benefit of digital notes is that you can use control find to automatically find what you need which of course lowers the amount of time needed to study and put your stuff together and this is especially helpful if let's say you're taking an exam online that allows you to also have your like it's an open note exam you can also have your notes open while you're taking it using control find is so helpful when doing that because if that exam is timed all you have to do is automatically type in a keyword and it pops up as opposed to physically 
combing through all these pages if you're a physical note taker. So one thing that I like to do when I'm creating digital notes, I always put them on a Google document because then you can access it from your phone and just be walking out and still studying on your way, walking to class or even studying as soon as you wake up and like getting on your phone and opening the app to scroll through it. And outside of the Google Docs, I also use the overall Google Drive to combine a massive PDF of all the PowerPoint lectures that will be covered within that particular exam. So what I do is I create on my laptop separate tabs for each of the shared PowerPoints that the professors put on the server, the school server, and then I convert those PowerPoints into PDFs individually. And then once I convert them individually to PDFs, I combine those individual lectures all into one master lecture PDF. And then I hyperlink gosh i know this sounds like a lot but once you get it once you get the flow of it it's so easy and then from there that combined pdf of all those lecture notes i drag and drop that to my google drive and then use the shared link and hyperlink that at the top of my exam review so that i can refer to it as i'm still scrolling throughout the google document version of my study guide i hope that made sense but once you get used to it you will save so much time with creating your exam guide and on that note if you're not already doing like a split screen when creating notes make sure that you do that so like half of your screen might be the master pdf of all those lecture notes and then the other half of your screen is your study guide and you're basically just like copying and pasting certain things that you'll need to be knowing for the exam okay so now let's talk about optimizing online resources um even though i have been like a 4.0 straight a student at all I sometimes cannot be a model student. There have been times where I skip class, I show up late to class, I leave early because I get bored or I'm just not properly learning from that particular professor. And so if that ever happens, I try to instead use my time more wisely by self-studying via YouTube, via Quizlet, Shag, all these other resources because there are people outside of your institution that probably can teach you better. So another major hack that has helped me get a 4.0 is creating the group chat, the group me for my class every single semester. I'm always that person who creates and initiates it. And the reason why this is so important and helpful for you throughout your academic career is because there are gonna be certain teachers or professors that you don't necessarily learn that well from. So in that case, you want to do peer-to-peer -peer learning from your classmates, or if you you know skip that class, you can be filled in on what happened, et cetera, especially if that professor is the type of where they don't upload online their lecture notes and so forth. On that note, be weary of some of these group chats because you might see yourself getting suspended or expelled from school. As an example of this, during my sophomore year of college, I want to say, I was in a group chat and it was like final exam season. And this class was a completely online class of where we could take the final exam on our own time, just as long as it was submitted by midnight. And so someone had went ahead and taken the exam and they decided to share the answers with the people in the group chat. And so many people were like, OMG, so amazing. Thank you for this. They were liking and hearting their message. And then and just a couple of days later someone who was also in the group chat a student by the way they decided to snitch on that student and all the other students who liked that message of them sharing the answers for the exam and as a result all those people in the class who engaged with that who initially posted it they ended up failing the class and i believe the girl who initially posted it she ended up having to like drop out of the college completely because of academic dishonesty and also here's another detail about this situation so that student who snitched she told the ta and then the ta joined the group chat with a fake username just so it wouldn't insinuate like showing their actual name so we wouldn't know it, it was her that's how she was able to see the chat history and everything but then the person who created the group chat finally caught on that the ta had just joined the chat and then they deleted them from the chat but it was already too late because they already saw what would happen and then they reported it to the professor and then those people ended up filling the exam and the overall class so with that being said if you are going to join or even be the person to create one of these group chats proceed with caution and make sure to set some rules some guidelines at the very beginning of the chat 
telling them what works and what you will not tolerate in the chat. And if they do overstep those boundaries, they will be deleted from it. So another study hack I like to use is to use past exam review notes. So as an example of this, let's say that you're taking a class during your spring semester of college. However, that same exact class was offered back in the fall, the previous semester. If you know someone like in that class group chat or someone else within your major, whatever it may be, who took that exam, who still has access to their notes and are willing to share it with you, that can really help you with better preparing for what's to come. So this next tip in particular is for my procrastinators such as myself. You will find yourself missing deadlines or nearly missing deadlines. So it is very helpful that you trick yourself about that deadline. So let's say that an assignment is due July 20th. Well, on your spreadsheet of when certain assignments are due, you're instead going to write down that it's due two to three days beforehand so that you are not rushing it last minute. This has saved me so much from close calls not only with assignments but also competitive opportunities like internship applications scholarship applications there have been thousands and thousands of dollars that I wouldn't have won literally over twenty thousand dollars in scholarships that I wouldn't have won had I not tricked myself about the deadline that's how serious this is if you are a procrastinator and on that note a lot of my content focuses on scholarship advice I have a book and I have an online course that gives my step-by-step -step process to winning 30 scholarships over the years so make sure to check that out on your own time when you can. Anywho, I hope that this video was helpful and informative. Make sure to check out all the other videos linked on my other playlist related to college, scholarship advice, tech advice, whatever it may be that you're interested in. And also please, please, please like this video, subscribe and comment and share with someone else who can really benefit from it. So yeah, bye.